Three, two, one, check, 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 check. Welcome back, everybody, to the Johnny Drinks Podcast. I'm your co-host, Johnny, here with my father. This is John. Happy New Year. Happy, ha- happy, oh yes, today's uh, Happy New Year. Yeah, it's, it's actually the day after. It's uh, the second. And before we get into this, I want to quickly hit on what we have over here, because we are Johnny Drinks, we do like to drink. Um, we oh. have a special holiday, yes. Coquito, made by yours truly, <laughs> yes. the man behind the camera, Yes, Joe, closed on Monday. Closed on Monday, Joe. That's made, what they call him. Made, let's be specific here. He made this for, I think, me? I don't know if it was for I'm us. Not, I'm actually, as New Year's resolution, is to get my health back, so I'm, I'm fasting right now. Right, so, so this is drinking. one of the problems, though, for me, is this is... My one of my resolutions is to uh, dry things out a little bit. Well, and, and now I really want to have this, so do for the I'm fans. not going to do it um, for purpose of that's, this is research. I this, mean, that's not even close to a sip. This that's is a whole for, last this glass. is just for research. Yep, sure, but no, it really didn't start yet because we know the magic of television, right? All right, so for the people the that, ma- are, the that magic are out of there, we are filming this in late <laughs> December. We're going to be airing this on January second. Right. So hypothetically speaking. You're going to see this when he is dry. Well, you're going to see this. So maybe I could you're, going to, you're going to have some, listen, this is why we're talking about what we are preparing for, and that's the new year. So Right. So take a sip. Let's, let's I, I uh, have to. I have to. I, I, someone gave me this as a gift in the form of what I would celebrate, and these are the best types of offerings, right? Something that someone put thought into, and in this case, made it with his own little hands. His own little Puerto Rican hands. He's got yes, big ass Joe, hands. Joe, is this Puerto Rican, what do you call this? It's a, this is a Puerto Rican eggnog, you said. Yeah, 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 Puerto Rican eggnog made by a Cuban. Made by a Cuban. Yeah. This right. smells, so it smells that's amazing. Why said, all right. it smells awesome, is right. So, wow. what do you think that smells coconut, like? There's coconut, I know, there's coconut in here. You can taste, the, you can smell the coconut. Yeah, very evident. Cinnamon? Cin- yes, yes. Cinnamon. Oh, um, yeah, all the cinnamon, nutmeg, right? Yeah. It's almost like, it's just wow. like a, it's like it's a Spanish creamy. egg. Now, hold on. Here's yeah, the yeah, thing. that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's almost like a, a, like a horchata too, right? I mean, it's pretty, it's rich. All right, so what is the alcohol in this? Is it rum in here? Is there rum in here? Yeah, that's one of them. There's more than there's, one. Is there rum and vodka? There's three. Two of them are rum. So mm-hmm. uh, two of rum, must, one must be a, 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 a light rum and a dark rum, No. Is there two, two, two rums? One's light, one's spiced? One's spi- yes. Yeah. And the other one is light, yes. And try to guess the third. Come on. I know it. Yeah, I feel like I could taste it it's too. It's right there. It's on the tip of your tongue, literally. Oh my gosh. Come on. I, Say it. I really... <laughs> Go with your intuition. That's about New Year's resolutions. I really... The taste of this, it, that third flavor profile is trying to come through. And I, I can't... I can't place it. It's another alcohol. Yep. It's, it's actually the main spirit. Come on. The audience is I want to say liqueur 43, but that's, probably, that's not it. That's not doing it fair. It's not liqueur 43. It's... Oh, come on. Oh, my God. I keep getting it right, on you the got way about five back. Seconds till, I get it on the way back. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't know. It's, it's Spanish. It's tequila. Okay, I don't... There that's tequila. Go, yeah. No, there's no tequila in that. There's tequila in that? Primarily tequila. I only knew that because he told me. That's oh, I was delicious. Say, that is so, I can't even taste That it. is way better than... I don't than taste I, tequila at all. That's way better than any eggnog this or horchata delicious. that I've ever had. This Thank is you. delicious. Joe, you crush it, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank well, you. Well, now we're locked in. The Johnny Drinks podcast officially started with a drink. Thank God. New Year, new us. Mm. Let's reflect on 2023. Yeah. I would say, finally... The first year of normalcy since 2020, right? Things are, are, are becoming a little more like they once were. I don't know if you notice this. I'm going to ask you the question. Do you notice that people are still trying to get back to understanding how to live in society? And, and I, I feel like they still lost a bit of something. People are going I to think, be forever I think changed. I think a large, a large population of people lost something, but I don't even think they realized what they lost. So it's hard to it, I mean, think about it. So it's hard to understand what you, what you may have lost if you don't even realize mm-hmm. the fact that something's missing. What do you think they lost? I think a lot of people lost the routine uh, of answering and, and be account- being accountable 
for others. Why do you think that? B- because of what happened in 2020, everyone was put in a situations literally where they were confined and isolated. And sometimes isolation, even if you were around five, six, seven people in your house, you could still feel that isolation, feel alone, right? Your routine was different. Yeah. And, and then there's those who literally were isolated and forced to be alone. Do you think people maybe lost trust in their higher ups? Like maybe bosses aren't as respected anymore. They're not listened to. People want to do things their own way. There's a lot more entrepreneurial spirit out but there. But that's irrelevant. A lot to, of, that's always well, been. I, no, I think a lot of people were forced to reevaluate how they did business, right? So business once was done with a certain accountability, a routine, nine mm-hmm. to five. Okay. Well, that changed. Even the nine to five then became... Um, a, a place where even if you went into, right, you went into a, an office, it slowly before the pandemic started to change with um, a balance of that schedule, right? So you, you, you found that some people were working nine to five in a specific office building with a specific desk and that was their routine. Yeah. And then obviously COVID came, it broke that up, forced people to live and work in their home. And that created another set of you know, rules of engagement. And today now, here we are, four years, you know, 2024, right around the corner. And those people who are responsible for the businesses that you either work for, right? Or their tier of management in those companies are forced to get people back into that other routine that's gonna be hard as like real hard yeah an industry leader and you're a business manager or your boss and they have to kind of ride the troops back yeah and people don't want to do what they used to do and you have to you do you have to listen or do you have to just sort of stick to your word and say this is what's if you like your job you like getting paid you got to listen but but what what's created here is now this false sense of i said an entrepreneurial spirit so if you ask anyone that was working in a cubicle that now has found a, a, a better or a different routine in their mind and they're more efficient in their mind and they're working from their home, they're going to always defer back to that and say, well, I don't need to go back in the office. It's a waste of time. I'm yeah. more productive. I'm sitting in the car now for an hour. Um, I'm getting caught into the hustle bustle of whatever traffic and weather conditions are and that's downtime. I'm not being efficient. So that's a narrative that's is going to be that's a point of contention that's a place that for for those in 2024 that are trying to get the workforce the employee base back and implemented to a a, a version of the old routine that's their greatest challenge is getting back to the sense of getting them back physically into the office yeah i guess there is really no normal now no and i think a lot of people just feel like i said that i could do the job the same way if not better, just leave me alone. Let me stay at home and let me sit behind my laptop. Yeah. And whether or not like you're more efficient at home, I think there's like social skills that now we're losing. And imagine like you were at an age where you're supposed to be learning these social skills. And now that's two and a half, three years of you're not going out. You're not socializing. You're not learning how to communicate. You're not learning how to please a boss. Hmm. That's a thing too. Like ass kissing is a little bit of a skill that you have to learn. And if you never did that because you were home in the office, where do you, right. where do you learn those things? Well, you, you, you need to be in and around people who have done it before, people who, have, who can show you the way and people that are skilled enough to then share back with you some of the shortcuts. There's a lot of like, shortcuts without cheating and shorting you of the experience. There are workarounds. Yeah. And you don't learn those workarounds unless you figure it out by accident or someone shows you the way. Yeah. It's just now you have to, I guess, force yourself back into uncomfortable situations. Like, do you feel like you, even yourself, you're going out less and you're interacting more, less with other people? Going out socially less? No, I don't feel like, I feel like, no, social, we were talking about two different things that you're talking about a professional work routine and now a, um, some sort of socialization. Well, the overall consensus is that from COVID you were locked in to the house and the confines of only hanging out with the people that were there. So sometimes that creates this thought of, I don't have to speak with other people and you, and you lose and you forget how important that really is. And so now people in 2023, 
I don't know if it's my age, hmm. but I feel way less interested in going out all the time. That's just your age. I, you, I think you're reaching. I, I, I think that's you reach a point where you Maybe. already have a preconceived notion of what it, what the bar scene is going to be like, who's going to be there, what the show is going to kind of unveil. You know that you could pick three and four different spots in and around the area that you live and that you'll consider to socialize. You know what's going to be there. Yeah. It's going to be the same people, yeah. same girls, same guys, same, hey, let's pregame here or pregame there. You know, that's, that's just an age thing for you. That's when you know, maybe personally, that it's time to reevaluate and maybe it's time to settle down a little bit. Mm, and, and, and well, I'm not saying get married. I'm saying like reevaluate, recheck. Hence the reason why each year, January is a good time to reflect. You reflect on what you did, what you did well, what maybe you'd like to do differently and better, how you can bring a greater value to yourself, to your family, to your friends. And then to 2024 is just that clean slate. A lot of people wait for, for the new year and that's the time they say, all right, now I'm going to do it, what, whatever it is. But the people that are better at it than others do it throughout the year. Yeah, but I think, obviously, but humans are extremely motivated by excitement. So the excitement, and I, and I was thinking about this too when you were talking about me going out. When you hit an age, and maybe this is what's happening, is yeah. when you're 21, 22, your excitement of the future is almost way too high that your expectations are too high. And now you go out and maybe it was a good time, but you expect it to be a great time and now you're upset. Mm. So I've learned to lower my expectations. I still have a very optimistic mindset, but I don't go out with this whole, tonight's gonna be a movie. And this is gonna be the best night of my life. Mm. And I appreciate nights a lot more now. So I think it's the same thing about setting expectations where January 1st or December 31st, whatever it is, you sit down, you write out your goals. You're writing out your fitness goals, your work goals, your relationship goals, whatever it is. You're getting excited about that because you're manifesting it. You're putting it down on paper. That gives you the excuse now to go and you know, achieve that. Whereas are, you it's a little really, bit are you really writing down your goals? No, I'm, I'm saying generally. Oh, so, who, okay. But that's a very important piece in itself. All I'm saying is I think like the new year gives you like that deadline of I have to go and do this now where that's the point that I was trying to make about 2023 and this whole COVID thing. The lines are blurred of like what you had to do. Like work was sometimes okay. Work was sometimes you didn't really have to do it. Going to the gym. Yeah, but the gyms are closed and I don't have to eat that well. So it hardens the lines a little bit of saying, no, I'm going to do this and whether or not it's going to work out is up to me, but I have to go and try to achieve something. Okay. And so hence, here we are thinking about what 2024 is going to bring. Yes. Yes. Correct. And so, so when, when you think about that, what, what, what is your approach? I, you, you mentioned writing something down, but is that the exercise you'll really go through or will you just say things to yourself and then stick to the discipline. Uh, I'm not going to drink in 2024 for the month for an entire month. Okay. Maybe you don't have to write that down, but if you say it and you throw it out there, are you, you're going to plan to follow it, right? Well, that's I, honestly, I think that's why social media is so important. Like the reason I went on social media and said, I'm not drinking for the month mm. is because I'm not going to hold myself as accountable if I know I'm the only one that knows. And it's maybe that's a flaw that I have, but it's hard for me to have no, self motivation like yeah. to do certain things where if I said to everybody else that's out there, I'm not drinking for a month. Right. I can't let everybody else down and I can't give them a reason to say, look, you, you proved yourself wrong. Well, it's accountability. It's accountability. And I think that goes to the segue of setting goals. I think setting goals can be dangerous at times because what happens, and COVID is a really good example of this, um, is like, if you set a goal that's way too egregious and then you don't achieve it, there's two ways of looking at it. The first way is, oh, well, you landed a little bit lower, but that's still a really good goal. The way I see it sometimes is, I would not like to condition myself to get comfortable and accepting of not achieving goals. Like you set a goal for the first time, you don't achieve it, you're very, very upset. You set a goal a second time, you don't achieve it, it's a diminishing return of how upset you are. So now you're like, ah, that's all right. This well, year so, I say, okay. I'm gonna get in really good shape, but I'm kind of blase about my goals. And now I'm like, ah, who gives a shit? So let's, like, let's, let's reevaluate your goal setting. That's what it, I'm saying. Well, not what the goal is. How to go about doing it. 
how to prepare yourself mindset, right? So there's the easiest thing to envision is a bar, right? There's, there's a bar. And where do you want the bar to be? Here, 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 or here. And I don't, I, I don't personally care where the bar is. Even if it's here, if I'm above the bar, then I reached my goal, proverbial goal. If it's here, okay, I know I've got to get up to stretch the goal. So these are, these are very key things, at least the way I envision and through the many years of in, you know, working in a workforce environment, there's, there, there's reasonable expectations, goals that you set, and then there's stretch goals. And your stretch goals are say, or excuse me, are saying, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going for that. And even if I fall here, you still accomplish something. You're still in that little you, range because of you, goal achievement. Right. Because if you envision it to be here and here, and I'm going to get there, and guess what? Maybe I'm not going to get there in 2024, but I'm getting there. I want to make $100,000, a $1 million. Okay, well, if that's whatever your goal, put it up there. You can't get to a million to 100,000 until you get to 5,000 to 10,000, right? So, so these are goals. If you're going to shoot for an unrealistic, I'm going to make X amount of dollars, I'm going to lose Y amount of, you know, X, Y, Z amount of um, pounds. If you're going to set that and it's unreasonable, unreasonable and unrealistic given your window, right? Then you're, you're setting yourself up. But if you set that stretch goal, I'm going to lose 50 pounds. Okay. You're going to lose it in a year or you're going to lose it in three months. Okay. Check yourself. Yeah. But don't you think sometimes goals are, if you, if you really aren't self-aware, they're number one, like shooting in the dark, but then number two, they can be limiting. Like if you had the potential, if you're using the weight loss example, to lose 50 pounds, but you wrote as your goal, I'm gonna lose 10 pounds. The mind is extremely powerful. So if now you so told lose yourself, 10 pounds, go lose 10 pounds. But that's first. my point is I think you could be, you can limit yourself because the, the potential out there was so much greater, but you thought it was down here. Yeah. Like I think people have to really realize their own true potential first before setting these, they have to be realistic with their goals. You, you, you're absolutely right. And, and that's all the more reason in being realistic is also visualizing and seeing it for yourself. Well, how, so how do you pick a goal that's a good stretch, but also not limiting? Well, I, think, I think, again, if you, let's pick a category. You want to talk income, you want to talk weight loss. Pick one. Well, income is hard because if you work a nine to five and you're mm -hmm. paid a salary, it's mm -hmm. sort of, if I'm making. No, we can stay with that. Why is it hard? Because if, let's say I'm making $100,000 and I want to make okay. a million. Uh, okay. So you make $100,000 right now and you're nine to five, it's a salary, but you want to make a million. Yeah, you want to make a million. Well, do you want to make a million in 30 days or you want to make a million in a year? Again, establish what's realistic. It's not real, it's probably not realistic that you're going to make a million dollars in 30 days, any sooner you're going to make it in a year. Not while working a nine to five at $100,000 a year, right? That, that's not realistic, but you can set that as a stretch goal. Yeah. I want to make a million dollars one day. So if I say to you, you make $100,000, $8,000 or so a month, and you do some real math for yourself, and you say, well, I have a car payment, I have rent, I have a house, I know I'm going to net $2,000 a month, $1,500 a month, five hundred, whatever the math is, what are you doing with that money, that extra money? I want to make a million dollars. So if you really want to make a million dollars, you take that money and you'll put it towards something, not an investment that's all of a sudden going to create this end game goal for yourself. But if you're young enough and you take $500 a month, $1,000 a month, you put it away and you have enough time, guess what? That money will compound. That money will grow. If you don't touch it, you'll turn around and you'll have a, you'll have if not that million, over 30, 40 years, what's rule 72? 10%, seven years, right? The rule, compounded interest. These are things that if you give math the chance and you 
understand how it works to your benefit only if you're disciplined, you can take that money that you're putting in savings and you'll reach that goal. Yeah. That's not hocus pocus. That's real, right? If you're undisciplined and I'm saving $1,500 a month, $1,000 a month, and you know, I really, I want to go on vacation, so I want to use it. Okay. And now something else comes up, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. And the next thing you know, you let six months, eight months, a year go by and you didn't invest something, anything. Well, now you just lost that, right? Yeah. I'm on target to lose 50 pounds. Well, my cheat day went to a cheat week because I went on vacation. My cheat week turned into a cheat month because I came back from vacation and I'm, I'm not in the routine. So I put five pounds back on. Okay. Now yeah. you're resetting again. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that kind of just it goes Does that back make sense? To, does, does my, the math of the income and the, the goal of what I well, sure, conceptually yeah. makes sense? Yeah, for, and, yeah. And is it possible? You're good with, you're good with math. You, you understand is, right? it what, is what possible? Is it possible to put money away and over a period of time? Yeah, of course. Whether it's 10, 20, 30 years, reach that, in the example, that goal of making a uh, million dollars. Yeah, and I, I've, yeah, of course. Okay. That example, definitely. But I think that's why it's so important that you're setting goals and have the right people around you to number one, help you achieve those goals, but mm -hmm. really help you highlight that it's possible to do. I may not know, again, like I don't know where to shoot if everybody around me is playing in the little or sandbox. Mm -hmm. But I also will lie to myself if I'm watching people on social media that are in these gigantic mm -hmm. sandboxes. So yeah. it's like finding people that are maybe a stretch above you, but are also providing you the tools to go and do it yourself. And it's not about like mentoring you all the time, but just showing you, oh, I have $100,000, he's in my same, industry, he's making a million now, how is he doing it? Mm -hmm. Let me repeat and, and well, step by step, right. see what I can do right. to achieve that. And I think that's the issue with, with social media now is that you see everybody that is a one percent, right? Hypothetically, mm -hmm. if you're super, super successful, you have a skill set that is sort of God given. Not everybody has that. That's a reality. But unfortunately, you're watching it as if it is a reality for you. But nobody wants to again, have that self-talk to realize I don't, I don't have what that guy has. I'm going to keep chasing the dragon until I, I, I can't do it anymore because I'm chasing something that, that is never really for me. Wait, so explain this to me. And I, I think I know what you mean, but you're speaking about social media and yeah. what I, what then is one of the things that's not favorable or yeah. not good about it. Right. Yeah. It's about you. We're doing a dress. We're, we're changing our clothes. Keep going, I'm listening. We're changing our clothes. You want me to take I'm my hot. shirt off? No, I don't care what you do. Yeah, I, I so, think... Like, like, because like this a, is social media, right? This is, this is social media, and we think we're bringing value. Well, I think we are too, but that's the issue when you're looking at somebody's highlight reel, and again, you're looking at somebody that's not even close to who you are. Mm -hmm. If I watch Michael Jordan play basketball, and I start to believe I can go play basketball in the NBA, I'm fooling myself. I'm, I'm ruining the chance to become a better version of myself by chasing another human being. I think that's the biggest issue. I think if you're gonna pull motivation from people online, that's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. pull, pe pull from people that are aligned with who you are and who you can be. Well, and, but you have to also, again, optics, and you have to quantify it. The optics of watching something for 30 seconds and thinking, wow, that guy or that girl has made it, has done it. They're the pinnacle of that venue, right? That whatever it is yes. that you see. That's the first misnomer. That's the first mistake. You, you need to understand that there's another backdrop story to that. However, they got there. However, we got here. 2023 was a, a great year. A lot of good came out of 2023 a lot of things came out of 2023 also for us that weren't so f favorable. There weren't a lot of fun. A lot of, a lot of mistakes made, agreements contractually with other people, vendors, alignments. You talking about us? Yeah, talking about us, 2023. Not me and you as the, as the social media content page. People will look to your point and see this and go, wow, look at that, great. Oh, but less about... I want, I want to be like them. Less about... Okay, take that point. Yeah. Th that's the point. I want to be like them. 
Mm -hmm. And it's everybody wants to be a content creator now mm -hmm. until you stick a camera in the face and they're like, uh, I, uh, so if you feel, and, and that's the, that's the problem that like, it's not, that's not a problem. If you don't want to be on camera, then stop lying to yourself and saying, I want to be an influencer. You don't. Right. Oh, okay. well, that's, that's okay. That's a short lived but experience. That's my point. They're going to know that real quickly. No, they're not. That's the problem with social media is that you see a highlight reel every day of something new. It's a, it's a shiny new toy. So if I want to be a really good power lifter and I watch power lifters mm -hmm. lift and it looks really exciting. I yeah. get in the gym, I start power lifting and I hate it. Maybe it's not for me, mm -hmm. but you're telling yourself, oh, maybe he hated it too. No, maybe you just weren't meant for that. And then you go watch CrossFitters and they look really exciting. And you're like, no, no, this is for me. And then you hate that too. And so you don't really, you're not looking within enough. You're looking at other people and trying to find a piece of you in them. And that's not how it should be. But if you're, we found, this was natural for us. This isn't hard for us. We no. like to, to put the time in and the effort in because right. this is what we, that, this is what we're good at and this is what we enjoy doing. I think that's the misnomer. Everybody is so pressed to like take resistance head on and it's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be painstaking. Not really. I like think, it's I supposed think to have a I, level of. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people overcomplicate things just for the sake of not really understanding it. Okay. Right. The, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. What do you mean by that? Well, that's Sigmund Freud. No, no. What do you mean by that? That's what it is. Like there's nothing more to sometimes, sometimes this glass would just be nothing more than a glass. No. I could break it like any other glass. Short, fat, wide, circle. Like, wow, that's cool. It's, that's the most attractive glass I've ever seen. No, I, I understand what you're and, saying. I don't okay, get the analogy. So, so the, the analogy is the person that watches us for the first time or anything to power lifter in your example for the first time. Oh, I want to be that power lifter. I want to do that. You're saying that that's not realistic. It's not realistic for that person to watch that and then think that they can just easily do that. Ease is not the, I don't think anything worth doing is easy. I think if it'll, people have to start really realizing what's aligned for you. You know. Okay, but so stay with your power lifter example. If okay. I see that, I'm going to pull motivation from it. Well, why can't I do that? I could do that. If you want to. I, I may not be able to do, I may not be able to do the same amount of weight. Yeah. Okay, so understand that. But I can do that. If I have two legs, two arms, and I want to deadlift. You could do it. Anybody could do it. That's my point right there. Is if you're physically limited, you could still figure out a way to do it. Right. That's not, I, that's my point right there is you said you wanted to deadlift. If mm -hmm. every time you're telling your, you have to convince yourself that you want to deadlift and you like to deadlift, you probably don't like to deadlift. Like there has to be a level of excitement to what you're pursuing or else it's really not worth pursuing. Yeah, it's a hobby. It's, that's one thing. But if you're going to make your life purpose to go try to do something you really aren't aligned with, that's the issue with social media is it's sort of lying to you and telling you that you want to do something you really don't want well, to do. Well, this, this is entertainment. Yeah, it's but not movie. for many people. Well, but people, well, that's, it starts with your, your, your own. It starts with each person's own understanding of what the heck it is you're watching. It's education. It's informative. It's a lot of things that are misleading. It is all, all entertainment in one form or another. When you understand, this is no different than me watching a James Bond movie, Casino Royale, me saying, man, that guy is no, that's sharp. So different. No, no, it's not. Nope. No, you know what? Sharp, sharp dressed, nice cars, you know, women, lifestyle. Oh, and he's a killer. And he's an unbelievably athletic superhero, superhero type. Okay, so it's entertainment. And from that movie as an example, if I think I can go get a nine millimeter and pull it out of my shoe and shoot back, okay, well that's now, shame on me, hold on, shame on okay. me. But I could buy a tuxedo. I can go out and look the part. I could buy a nice car if I had the money. I can attract and find a beautiful partner in the form of a woman. I could fall in love. Like the, so the movie, people need to understand. When you look at 30 seconds of something, that's all you got. You, th there's nothing else. You didn't give yourself a chance to understand it because all you saw was 30 seconds. When you watch a two-hour movie, you sometimes get a better understanding of what unfolded. There's a storyline there. Mm, and yes. so it starts with your own two feet on the ground, mindset locked in, setting the right goals, being realistic, and 
to the point of where everyone does this in, 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 the new, in the new year, looking for improvement, looking for enhancements. Be realistic and you'll have a better chance. Yes, and then be realistic. But again, like I, I think the issue really lies within like you're not self-reflecting enough. I can watch a James Bond movie and, and look at that sharp dressed man and appreciate everything that he has the women, the skill set, the, the rapport he established, whatever it is. And I can tell myself, oh, I love doing that. I'm going to go dress up like that every day. Dressing up okay. nice like that, he doesn't dread in the morning. He probably likes doing it. Just like you like to dress nice, some, it shouldn't be painful. I think that's the issue that I have with a lot of people is that they're really not aligning with who they think they want to be. Like, it should not be painful. Okay, it starts with you. Two feet on the ground, right? So, so. Right, so, but, so. That's my point is like really start to dive a little bit deeper within and say, what do I want to do? Like, do I want to be the sharp dressed exactly. man? Exactly. Maybe, right. maybe not. Maybe not. So go find what you really and, like to do. And again, we, we talk about this, right? Your, your outward projection of who you are starts really on the inside. If I don't care to shave, right? if I don't want to just shave because it cuts my neck or I cut my cut my head okay then don't shave but you know what happens then you look like kind of a slob because you're especially me if i didn't shave my head how crazy would that look right but I, the, i'm bald here i have hair here here it's it's a, at this point a conscious commitment because i know what i want to be inside for myself what's i want to see in the mirror i want to want to project outwardly if I said, I don't care, it's too, I cut my head, it's a pain in the butt. Right, I would rather, so. Then I, then I live with and hold what that, what that really is at the end of the day, and that's not something, that's not a look that, that, that I really want. Correct, but that, right, so you, there's always gonna be like a hard work associated with doing anything, so you, let's say the hard work is shaving your head every day, whatever. If that's the hardest thing you have to do, yeah. But that's, my point is that for you, that is, not even close to a consideration of not doing because it's so worth it for you to look a certain way, to feel a certain way. But if it wasn't, like if getting dressed for you every day and putting out a really nice outfit was painstaking, why are you forcing yourself into a hole you don't have to fit in? Okay. But when you think through I any mean, what you just said about, okay, shaving, brushing your teeth, taking a shower, <laughs> these are all discipline. Now they just go. You don't yeah. think about it. I don't think about these things. Dressing, well, you got to think about it. You don't just go in your closet and pull stuff out necessarily without a understanding what that may be as a look for you, yeah. right? And maybe more importantly, backing up. Well, do I have the right stuff in the closet? Did I, did I go buy the right stuff? And how old is the stuff that I have in the closet? And is that still going to even fit the style that I'm and the look I'm going for? Or do you always default to? Oh, I'll just put a pair of joggers on and a hoodie. You could do that. That's good news is that's in. It's not about being in or not. It's but, if it does align with who you really want to be. Again, yes, all of that so does it align. But you could fall very complacent into that, and it becomes very easy to all of a sudden not understand. Man, I'm wearing the same stuff, different colors, every day. All right, if you're good with that, right? Th if that's you're good fine. With that, if that's you're good the with that. Whole point. But when you watch the 30 second clip of somebody else, a James Bond, and you whatever it is, and you're like, wow, that guy's sharp. That guy's got money. That guy's got this. Whoever it is, in whatever soundbite, then don't do the injustice to yourself and think, well, why can't I have that? Right. I, Maybe. I, yeah. Maybe I, yeah. right now we gotta take a break because the dogs are barking. All right, too. We'll be back with this Alpo commercial about my goals, what they are, and what, and what 2023 was like. And I'm like, yeah, I got it. I, I'm, I'm ready. Like I know what I know, what my goals are for 2024. They're similar to what they were for 2023 yeah. and 22 and right. 20. They're very similar year after year. Right. And I think that's part of people understanding. It doesn't have to be this revolutionary idea. That's my point. That's okay. literally what okay. I'm saying. But you need to verbalize it. You, you need, you should write it down. You should. Helps. You should verbalize it to someone for accountability. And you, third, should be reasonable in your execution of what is my timing and, and what's, where am I really going to 
quantify this. Is it 30 days? Is it 365 days? Right. Yeah. Or is it two, three years? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like goals, I feel like it should be like a step-by-step process. It's not like you're going from zero to 100. Like you went from zero to one and like, oh, right. wow, that was achievable. Let me go achieve this times two. And then, wow, right. that, even that was achievable. Let me go achieve this times. And let me push the boundaries. And a lot, again, that helps you align with who you are because yeah. you find what you like and what you don't like. If your goal right now, hypothetically, I'm going to train to run a marathon. Mm. Let's say that was your 2024 goal. Yeah. And you trained for the first six months, you did it properly, ran the marathon, looked back and said, that sucked. Mm-hmm. You're not right, doing okay. that again. No, you're not. It's not aligned with who Done. you really Done. are. Now let's say, flip it, train for the marathon, Marathon, you did really well, you loved it. You're a runner. You yeah. like doing that stuff. You yeah. should keep doing uh-huh. that. And guess what? Now, hold on. Trained, you did it, accomplished it. What? Well, I want to do it again. Now you get a bone spur. Well, can't run. You, you physically can't. No, no, hold on. You still want to do it, but you got a bone spur in your foot, you can't. Okay. Now you can't. So now you've got to reevaluate your goal. Sure, I guess. No, like, yes, but that's what that's the realistic part about goal setting. It's a pivot, it's a change, it's a reevaluation and a realignment for yourself to figure out how you're gonna so if I wanna go back to your marathon and do another marathon, I may have to reevaluate and 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 stretch it and change it out again. And you can't look at that as then a failure. Oh, I did it last year, I finished, you know. 100 and I'm going to do it next year. I'm going to finish in the top 45, 50. And then you get struck with something physically that will prevent you. Did you fail? No, no, it's not right. Well, but, but I if think you, but people, if you, if you ran again and placed 120, you did fail. No, yes, you no, did. you didn't. You failed. You didn't no, achieve your goal. No, I don't see again that that's to me, that goes back to your stretch goal and your goal. Your stretch goal was to finish in top better than you did the year before. All right. So I didn't, you know what? I didn't. I still accomplished something. I finished that race. Yeah, but that shouldn't be enough for you. If you that set the, be, if no, you set the goal and you didn't achieve the people. goal. Your stretch goal was to be better than the year before. Guess what? You're a year older. Guess what? The other person or persons that are in the same are not the same people that were in a race the year before. They're a little faster. They're a little stronger. They're a little younger. So, you know what? The fact that you finished the race... And you finished 120 and last year was 100. Okay, next year, I'm, gonna, I'm going to set my goal, reevaluate, and I'm going to get at least back to hope that 100 mark again. But I think that's the, that was my point about setting goals that are a little more achievable because that, I think, is a bit of a, that's a dangerous mindset, is if every time you go for a goal and you fail it, you justify it and you say, oh, well, you know what, at least I ran it and at least I did what... You should be mad at yourself. Like you set out a goal and you failed. That's okay that you failed that goal. You, but you, you should you strive use, to. You to use s- the word failure. I don't. I don't. That I'm not even like. You I'm don't, not you don't processing that that. that. that word. It's a no, word. It's reality. No, 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 no. These are all things that again, how you start and think it through to plan to accomplish what it is you want has everything to do with then what happens in the end. But it's a reality. It doesn't matter. Failing isn't a bad thing at all. But I the reality is... Was. I didn't say it was bad or good. But it is black and white. If you set out a goal, if I want to run this marathon in this much time, that is my goal, and I don't achieve that goal, mm-hmm. I have failed at that goal. I finished the race, though. The, okay, fine. Congratulations. But, but you failed at that goal. I'm not no, saying you didn't. But see, what do you mean, no? That, that, that's a mindset. No, it's not. It, no, it, it's a mindset for people. If you're going to place to the... Again, shame on you then for saying, I want to finish here. And if I don't, it's a failure. I never, no, or you I failed at achieving that in goal. This time, I want to finish in a certain amount of time. And if I don't, that's a failure. If you're taking a test and you have a score less than 50, you what? Failed the test. Well, that's a different measuring no, stick. No, it's not. That's you're, a different measuring stick. The measuring stick, stick is, you're I want. Talking, you're talking about, did I study for the test? Maybe I didn't study enough for the test. Still failed. I, I, oh, no, but so hold on a second. If I'm going to show up sitting down for, to your example, take a test okay. without studying, without knowing the subject matter, without, without, without. And I sit down, well, shame on me. I didn't set the reasonable expectation and a reasonable goal. Did I set a goal that I was going to do better than 50%? Did I help myself in preparing for that? No. Right. In the marathon, you don't just run out. You don't just walk out tomorrow and run the marathon. But it brings you, us back to our first you point. You build yourself up and you... It, 
at least again, set smaller milestones so that you can accomplish what it is that you have as, I'll say it again, a stretch goal or a goal. And to me, it's only layers. It truly is layers of success, not a failure. There is no chance in heck anybody that trains for a marathon, finishes the marathon, should feel like they failed. Mm. But again, you're, you're, but you're equating a feeling to failing as a bad thing. And you're equating a fail. No, you're equating to not reaching the goal as a failure, a complete right. and that's failure. A, but that's not a bad thing is what I'm saying. But it's you not can, a failure. It is in the literal sense of the word. You have right. failed in that that's task of different. achieving that goal. The, the, you know, I'm not maybe, saying that's a bad thing. You, you take things is, and you spin them. I'm no, not saying it's a bad thing. Maybe this is where age affords. No, it's not being, it's not about age maybe at all. The, maybe this is where age affords different perspective. I don't think that has anything no, to do with age. Hopefully one day you rewind, you watch this and you say, oh. But what, what makes, you, what makes that right versus wrong? It's I don't not think right, it's right. I didn't say right and wrong. Right, so what, okay, what is the issue with, because there has to be help. You could live in that space forever and that's a dangerous space to live. As you say to yourself, whatever, $100,000 you wanna make and your goal is to make 500,000 and then you made 120. And you're like, oh well, you know, I didn't make 500 but I made more than 100 so I'm, I'm okay. Next year goes by, you make 130. Well, I didn't make, so you're gonna live in that like space of acceptance of you could have, been, you're accepting a little bit of a mediocrity when you could have been great. You, you need to understand, again, the rules of engagement and where you started with your feet on the ground and how you went after that. You said 100, 120, 130. I wanna make one of my, well, hold on. What'd you do? I'll go back to, well, what did you do with the money that you saved? But okay. That factors in Can just I because I didn't make as a base salary more money right. than I thought I was going to. That doesn't mean I didn't. Okay. Relevant to this. Come close to. Fine. I'm not saying, I'm not saying the hypotheticals here. I'm at, so you, you brought up the, a good point. Failing a test. I went into the test blind, failed it. Literal fail. Definition of failing. Yep. You go back to the drawing board and say, why did I fail? What did I do wrong? I didn't study. I didn't prepare. Maybe. Next time around, you study, you prepare, you get a 70. Great. How could I have done better than that? Right? You can be happy that you did it, but if your goal was to get a 90, there's still that margin of improvement. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. No, I, didn't, I don't quantify it as good or bad. And I don't always think that when we're talking here about goal setting and accomplishments for yourself, Goal setting, accomplishments for yourself, that there needs to be emphasis that's put on the lack of accomplish, uh, accomplishment. So we play a football game, we play a sport, yeah. and we didn't win the game. Yeah. But we know if we executed, like we, we know what we did well, we know where we showed up, yeah. and we were unprepared. So you failed as a goal. team. Well, you, well, the goal every time is to win the game. Right. But if you don't win the game, and so you're saying, you lost, that means you failed? If you lose, the, you lost the football game, you failed. Correct. In the literal definition of hold what on. a failure uh, okay. is, you failed that goal. Hold on, hold on. I, I'm we not are on saying... the same team. We're on the same team. Okay. We lost the game. Right. I don't know. I'm the quarterback. I was, I was 10 for 10. Okay. I had a perfect game. What was your goal? To win. You lost. You failed. No, we lost. You I didn't fail. You failed your goal. Oh, no, 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 no. I executed, maybe someone else didn't on my team, we failed. Right. I can walk away Feeling like knowing you I that played game. as well as I possibly could, came ready, and that's a self, that's a reflection independently. You're saying, I failed. That's not no, how I, team I, players I, well, feel. I gotta tell you, you don't feel like that. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'll bet, and there's nothing happy and satisfying to say, oh, I did well, so I don't care about right. anyone else. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, no, that's no, not what not. I'm saying. I'm saying, now I know what, extra work's got to go in to pull the other guy along. Right. Now I know what we've done. We did so many things. You had to have done something right, hopefully something right that you could pull from and exponentially grow and progress forward to get you better the next time. Right. right? I think we, we have the exact same mindset. We're wording it a little bit differently. Like, I, again, I would see that, yeah, you might have failed your overall goal. You can have a little pity party, feel bad about yourself. But the next day, there is a benefit to reflecting and saying, well, what did we do right? Like we're all upset. Yeah. We acknowledge. And that's right. the point of, I think there's a, okay. there's a need to acknowledge you failed your goal. Fine. How you what, fell short of your goal, right? Okay. Failed, fell short. You're using a different word to, to explain the exact same thing. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe. So no, it's not. Maybe it is. Failure is not an option. See, so I don't use it. Then you're then you're being then you're being no, ignorant. It's, that's, no, that's, you're being it's blind it, to the reality if no, you say that. No, no, no. Failure was an option. You chose that option. You failed. No, not me. Maybe you. I'm not. It's not an option. You're just. That's just. No, me. it's it's really how you. That's literally like saying the sky is green. You, like okay, I'm not no, gonna believe you that the that, sky but the is sky's green. not falling either. It's I not falling. It was okay. Well, the, it's 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 your vantage point, your mindset. No, it's if not always about a mindset. Talk, you can't you, look at something John, and say and say this it's is, black when it's white. If you, no, because if it is black, then it's black, and it's black. And if it is white, then it is correct. But sometimes there's a blend in between, and you can see that. Wow, that's that. Okay, now I understand what gray sometimes is. not in now this I understand situation. What gray is now. There's a gray. There's always gray. Again, I'm not saying you can't learn from falling short of a goal or failing the goal. They're two synonymous. Listen, uh, you, you, you're, you're try, if you're trying to, like, I, I don't know, trying to say you set a goal. Right. And if you don't reach it, that's a failure. That's, if that's what you're saying. So in 2024, give me an example of a goal. I want to squat 500 pounds. Okay. Now, what do you squat today? Oh, man, I haven't squatted in a while. Uh, probably f if I put a bar on my back right now today, I'd probably be able to squat... I have 455, like maybe. Okay, so yeah. can I've, you, can I've done you, 475. Okay. That's my next question. The highest in your lifetime you've ever was 475? Yeah, some, yeah around that. So why would we say 500? Why would we say 500? Yeah. How's that even a realistic goal? I would say that's very in range if I train properly. So if you said it is 500 and you did 480, you failed? At achieving that goal, yes. I didn't you, fail. You already, my, you I'm already not a failure. Hard. You already did better than your personal best of 475, and that's a failure? In the literal sense of the goal that I tried to achieve, yes. I don't know. I don't understand wow. the, the, the reason. Mindset. It's mindset. This is the, if you think that's a failure, no, I got to tell you, I, I'm really I'm shocked. No, because you you're, ta you're that taking as a failure. you're taking what I'm saying the wrong way. You're taking it no, as a I'm negative. taking it literally. You just no, I, I'm I taking asked it literally. You your goal. You're not. I asked you what your goal was. Right. You said 500. See, I would challenge you to say, well, that's not realistic. So uh, we can't. Even, I can't even accept that you're going to squat 500 because you already told me your highest was 455. So uh, 475. But you said that if you did this now. In a year, that's not like realistic. 20, you, I can't put twenty Can pounds you? on my squat. I don't yeah. know. Is that how hard are you? Are you know, how many days a week are you irrelevant, train? Irrelevant to this. How? What's your? Of course, overall, all that who's matters. Your workout partner. All of that what, matters. All, that all does matter. All we are saying, I think, we are aligned in our mindset. All I am saying mm. is that sometimes it's okay to accept that you fell short of your goal. Are we aligned in our mindset? I think so because I would see that if I we both, if we I were squatting. So. What? You guys are basically saying the we're same We're saying the thing. same thing. That's like, yeah. I'm real, I, all I'm trying to do is bring this around home and say to you, we feel the same way. I'm just using a word like that literally triggers you. It's like the funniest no, thing in the world. <laughs> you hate the word. It's the weirdest I, thing. I, no, you it's get not very, weird. You know, I, do you know that? I don't. I we don't. can dissect that too because you get triggered by things and they're very interesting. You get like defensive. Hmm. No, I'm, I'm reflecting that. <laughs> okay. You get defensive about things and you take them the wrong way when you think they're skewed or perceived as negative. Why don't we just sit here and say, I can't. If we say, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, what happens? My point. I you never can't. in my so life. So don't say that. So I don't never say said that. Well, but that's, it's, a per, it's the same paralleled example what you're no, trying because, to say. No, because no. You're saying this, that's a trigger, the word failure. Well, it's not really a trigger. I just don't, I don't care to use it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Well, then you don't. I, you, I, I, so I love when people say, oh, we, I failed forward. Failing forward. Okay, good. You fall forward. You fail forward. Short of not accomplishing what you wanted to at that moment, you could call it whatever you want. I choose to focus on, I did something right. I'm getting closer. It's gonna break through, it's gonna happen, we're gonna go and collectively, why not me, why not us, why not, why not? Like, let's go. Okay, and again, I wanna bring this around town and say that we are on the same page, but. Use that example again, hypothetically. I should get back into coaching. I think I'm gonna no, you coach, should not, for sure. Coach sports. If that was your mindset and you said, I'm going to break, I'm going to do this, blah, 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 but you were never even close and that wasn't aligned with who you really wanted to be and what you were willing to do to achieve that, you're lying to yourself and you're, and you're wasting time. I'm not lying. Okay. Like, let's not in your setting example, let's reasonable say, goals. Correct. Right. That's reasonable the point. goals. If you're trying to be a marathon runner and 
you made it five miles. And you're like, you know what? But I'm there. I'm, I ran more than four. Well, if I did five, ran oh, more now, than four. We'll do 30, now I'm going to do 30, 35 miles. I ran more than four. So I'm right there. And the next year I run six. I'm right there. No, you're not right okay. there. You're probably never going to get there. That's not true. Why? Because you're not made you're for that. Progressing. You don't want, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do what you have you, to do to get there. You need to understand. You're lying better. to yourself. No. You People need, lie to themselves way too much. You need to much. understand differently what you signed up for and what you're truly trying to you, accomplish. Do you realize you do that though? You say the exact same thing that I say in different words. No, you're, you're saying if I ran five and then six and, okay, and then I didn't, you're never going to get, you said you're never going to get there. Well, why won't you ever get there? Because you're not willing if to there's do enough what, time. Because you're not willing to do what it really takes to get there. You just said the same thing differently mm. than I said it, but you said the same thing. No. Yes. Not at all. I what said you, you lied. said I'm not willing to do. How do you know what I'm willing to do? How do you know what that person's willing to I'm do? I'm saying hypothetically, let's say they're not. What are they doing? So break it down. What, what is that? I say to you, all right, you want to run a marathon, you got to run five miles a day or, and, and rotate okay. this and that. And you're like, okay. no, I don't want to do that. But I then don't set it. that as your goal. That's literally what I'm saying. Perfect. Okay. What are some of your 2024 goals? I'm going to run a marathon now. Right, me too. Yeah. I can run one right now There's with all this energy I have. Get right in it. The yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Mike Kurzer and Schween. Do you, do you have, uh, let me ask some 20, cause I, I really like, and I see it in you that progressive overload is very real. You've identified very early what you're good at. You're a hard worker. You like to sell. You are organized. You get up every day and you're consistent. Yeah. Those goals are, are very easy for you to set, right? I, I made this much or I did this much. I'm going to do that times two. Do you have any goals this year that are like completely out of that wheelhouse? The goals this year are different than goals in previous years. Previous years was always very measurable, obtainable, mm. better than the year before type thing, okay? Now the goals are different because the, the world that we are engaging in is different. Here I am in digital content creation space, right, with you. So the goals are different. Can the goals, the, one goal would be, we know what we did last year in 2023 really well we know some of the things that we didn't do well together and with like i said earlier vendors collaborations right there's some collaborations that we know we're not doing that again <laughs> it just wasn't a good alignment so it wasn't your- wasn't didn't work wasn't what we wanted to convey but you know someone said this would be great for you guys so we tried it well we learned so 2024 is going to be more of the things that we do well, the roles that we each play. And that I think is something that is going to be healthier and better improving for, for, for the growth, for our growth. So you're saying that your goal, one of the goals of 2024 is, I guess, analyzing a little bit more if a partnership or something is worth pursuing for us. Right. It makes a little more sense for us instead of just saying, hey, screw it, let's try it out. You, you need to say yes a lot slower sometimes, right? You don't just say yes to everything. You don't want to say no to everything yeah. and, and, and be short-sighted, but you've got to learn to slow down. We would need to learn to slow down on the yes. Okay, so those are more so like subjective goals. Do you have any objective goals? Like I want to do X. You know, I, want to, I personally want to take a closer look at because I'm 57, 58, right? Going to be 58. And health becomes, okay. so, so I want to take a closer look, you know, the whole 10 X and some of the other things, the blood work that we're, that I already did. Um, the, the liquid Vita that I, uh, through that, those guys, what'd you do? I did the full body. Well, blood explain, work. explain to it. So I did a full body workup. Um, I didn't, I don't even have the results back yet, so it's probably not good to talk about cause I don't even know what I'm talking about. All I know is they took about 10 vials of blood from me. <laughs> And I felt lightheaded and then they pumped me with this B12 other peptide thing yeah. and I was like, okay, now I'm back. Well, I think what but, you're, was that the first time you've, ever, you've done blood work? You know, I, blood work I've done blood work. I've never, I don't remember ever taking that many vials out that of was a re- That's a really comprehensive panel. I don't know what they yeah. do exactly, but yeah, well, we're going like, to find out. Yeah, this is why I'm, I'm excited about that. So that for me, timing wise is now a goal. That's interesting. I and like if, that. And if I'm told, if I'm told that, you know, uh, your enzymes, your this, your that, your blood count, your off balance here, and yeah, yeah. you know, alcohol is affecting your liver, and here's what. Well, guess what? Okay, I need to know that now. I will reset other goals. I don't want to say 
I'm going to go work out in the gym any differently. You don't until want to I, well, I don't want to say that to myself to think, well, that's that's how I'll fix something. Okay, yeah. Because working out in the gym might not get my blood enzyme, enzymes or my peptide balance and, and, and amino acid balance. Just, whatever. Throwing, just throwing out words now. I, I'm point. throwing out words. No, because this is what there's... <laughs> These blood peptides. No, the peptides that they, they put <laughs> in know, and the amino acids and the things, and the, the testosterone counts and like all these things. Yeah, that we got to get your you body something. chemistry. Get you well, your body chemistry is like obviously some serious things. And as you get older, it changes. So yeah, I yeah. don't know that I've never done this. And this is something that's for 2024. I'm looking forward to. Well, I am too, as your son. I, I like that you're taking a little more of a hold on your health. I think we're blessed genetically. I mean, yeah. you look at yourself, you look great for your age. And that's where it goes back to like comparing. You look good heavy too, by the way. Yeah, thank you. You, you. That's why it is, you know, you get in trouble by comparing yourself to other people, right? I could look at you right now and I said, next to the other 58 year old, you look yeah. great. But yeah. I will say, I'll go out and say, I would love to see the goal for you to really get back into health and wellness. Yeah. Like there was a, like I look at you again, from I know what your potential could be, yeah. you could look and feel way better. No, I know. You're not, you're not putting in enough effort nope. in the gym. You're not eating nope. healthy enough. Nope. And I would like to see that because I know oh, you can. Oh, my God. I just love eating all the fresh puts that I Okay, fair. All the food that I never used to really eat and I was yeah, really disciplined on. Well, it matters. But I got to tell you, until that's why I'm looking forward to the blood work. If the blood work comes back and, yeah. and it, it's okay and, and measure and balance and stuff, I'm like, okay, good. I, yeah. You know, there does become a point where... You get tired of going to the club. Yeah, but don't tell yourself that. Because, no, no, you get tired of going to the club out to drink with your buddies and the girls, the scene. You know it's the same. You get tired of it. Guess what? It, gets, it hurts to try to bench press 255, 275 at 57 years old. It physically hurts. You know why it hurts? Yeah, because it's the no pain, no gain. No, no I get it. Because my joints are older. Because my muscle elasticity is different. Because my 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 body chemistry and my muscle makeup is different than when I was thirty and forty years old. It is, but you like you said, now you're prioritizing and focusing on health. There is a certain way to go about lifting mm -hmm. and training yeah. to prepare and prevent a lot yeah. of what you're feeling yeah. now. Right, and and I think there's things you could definitely do to reverse. Yeah and plan for, yep. and you're going to feel a lot better, a lot different in the gym, but you have to get that motivation back to do well, it. And, and listen, I go, you know, I go, I go to gym every day. Fair, right? but I you go know it's not, as, it's not no, what it once Sometimes does. it's a half hour yeah. of just walking. Sometimes it's a half hour of talking to guys <laughs> that are there, and yeah. then a 15 minute stretch. Sometimes it's a spa day and we just go in the hot tub and the sauna and you know you shower and shave and like okay great let's go get breakfast. So th that's okay. I'm all right with that. Because again my goal is to go there every day. That's my routine. And then there are days that I'll get a 45 minute hour like wow, that was good. Body weight push-ups, pull-ups, you know the whole thing and the next day feel good yeah. and not digressed backwards that I pulled something. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, and I'm very yeah. curious to see what your blood work... Me too. And it's going to start with that. Yeah, That's right. going to lead we'll let you the guys way. Know. Exactly. We'll let you guys know what the blood work looks yeah, we'll like. We'll let you guys sure. know. Especially the, especially the guys uh, over at Liquid Vita that are doing this for us, uh, for me. So any stay other, tuned for that. Any other objective-based goals? Like, again, like numbers or things? Just... I have other goals that are private for family. Sure, fair and, enough. And that's, those are the, you know, those are the more, the most important ones that, you know, everyone continues to be in the direction and in a place that they need to go. So those are the priorities, really. Everything else can take a back seat. Truth is, the other reason, you know, I don't put the workouts in like I used to is because things get in the way. Life happens. And it's okay. I don't look at that as a failure. It's just a pause, right? It's just a pause. I go every day or try to, but some days I don't go. And so I don't, I don't trick myself to think, oh my God, I f f f f f failed because I didn't go every day. You understand? If your goal was to. If my goal, my goal is to go every day, show up every and day. You won. Congratulations. And I don't, but I don't really go every day, but you I don't know. I don't associate it that. Wow, this week I only went three times. And you should. What a, what a loser I was. No. I failed. Here, but here's the reality. If you, you look at like, 
and, and that's the thing too. Again, we go back to social media and looking at the, the 0, 0, 0.0001 percenters, mm. the people that are literally never satisfied with themselves. That's why they're well, that that's great. It's obsessive compulsive it's obsessive, and that's it, it the is overboard. A, correct, be, definitely an overboard. Be happy with yourself. Be sure. content in who you are first. But that'll kill, that'll kill a level, level of success. It could hinder it. Yeah. Yeah. So, being, right. Being very, like, you know, again, you didn't achieve that goal, but that's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. You, well, you, again, the, the hardest person to impress sometimes is yourself. Not for, not for some people. Sometimes the hardest person to impress is, is yourself, but it should start with yourself. You should Definitely. look in the mirror and see somebody that you, you, you like and, yeah. and find something about that person that you see in the mirror that you like. And that person's not perfect. There's not everything in that mirror that is going to always reflect the same way every day. You ever notice sometimes the, the light in the bathroom in the mirror is different. Sometimes you see things, especially as you get older, I'm like, where did that wrinkle come? How did that happen? Like home, like that's real. Yeah. Sometimes just the, the slightest little light puts another perspective on who you are. And that's the interesting, profound thing about life is I'm the same guy. I went to bed, I woke up, I feel great, but there's a different version in the mirror. How's that happen? Mm. Where, where, I didn't sleep that well. Why are these bags under my eyes? It's all right. Well, I'll, I'll be back. Get, get, get on with your day. Get your job done. Be healthy. Be constructive. And find, find your own greatness in the, the moment of whatever the day gives you. It's a good analogy. Very profound of you. Oh, okay, good. Did you follow it all the way? You lost me, and then, I, and then you brought me back home. Oh. There was a point where I was like, where's he going with the eyebrows? Well, the, the eyebrows. But then I, I was like, I, oh, you look, it could be, I think the point is, like you said. My eyebrows lately, so the hairs, I'm like, what the heck's going on? I, th I think your point is like perspective, right? Like I look at that every single day. Why do some days I wake up and I'm really excited, like a goal, right. or my job? Why do I wake up Sundays really excited? Next yep. day, everything has stayed the same but I just don't feel the same. Same way. guy, same girl. And that's the reality of sometimes. Same just, yeah. responsibilities yet. Why is one day, or because there's things that get thrown at you. Sometimes you're looking at turn the, you sideways. You're looking at the crows and sometimes you weren't. Yeah, sometimes who cares? Right. Are my eyes still hazel? Yep. They still blue, they still green, they still brown. Yep. You love, you love your analogies. Um, well, they're, they're mine. They, you can use them. If you don't want to use them, don't use them. No, I said Find you your them. own. Oh. Um, bucket list things. Do you have anything you want to do as like far as traveling 2024 things you want to experience? No, I mean, no, there's nothing I would say on a, a list of things I'd like to do that I, I haven't already done or that I would say before I, you know, leave this earth, I need to do, I don't, I don't need to bungee jump. I don't need to skydive so we can take those off. Traveling is, is nice. And in, in the broad scope of things, I've, I, tr I travel plenty and I, yeah. Listen, I'll tell you the truth. If you said, let's go upstate New York, let's go to Uncle Vince, <laughs> you know, let's go there and hang. That's great. That's exciting. That's a trip. It doesn't have to be out of the country. It doesn't have to require to get on a plane. It doesn't have to have the social, the, the social media pictures to support what a great time I had. How about this? Another example. Hold on one second. Let's cheers. Like, you can't drink that alone. And I we wasn't didn't cheers to. before, so you don't need to have a whole another glass. We just talked about health and wellness. No, and this a whole is a glass bit. I'm not having it. We can't have more than this. This is really heavy and sweet. But I didn't really have a breakfast, so this is like a. It's actually a protein I'm shake. I'm telling myself yeah. it's a protein shake. Well, listen, manifestation. And I do taste that. It. It's funny when once you said tequila. You're gonna yeah. cheers me. You said cheers, and then you go away. You know. Well, I just want to say. Here's to us. Here's to us. This is healthy. Thank you, Joe. Health, Thanks, wealth, Joe. happiness. Appreciate the gift. Dan, I don't know what your gift is, but we'll, we'll wait for it. Mm. Dan's being re pretty quiet over there. He's always quiet. He's stoic. <laughs> Dan, you know what Dan is? 22 years old. He's, he's, a, he's Dan's studying a learner. straight. No, well, yes, but he's a learner. He observes and he asks questions and he's very curious about life. As 22-year-olds should be. Mm -hmm. It's a very confusing, tough age to be because your brain is malleable. You're supposed to be a man. You feel like a kid. You don't know what you want to do. Nowadays, especially... That's why it's so crucial if you're out there to your young 20s, maybe late teens, surround yourself with the right people and really find something you want to do and align with that. Anyway. How old, Joe, you're, Joe, how old are you? 26? 
27. I'm old. Joe's 27. 27. No, I, I, it's going. That's, That's why he's so mature. You guys That's why he's so much you, wisdom. You, you guys, you both are mature. Um, yeah, and not to change the subject, and you want to do like a, a review on each one of those guys? Nope, not right now. Okay. This, um, is your, your, this is your, uh, your, your yearly review. We're going <laughs> to. Well, while you're talking about it, what would you tell yourself at 22? Oh, damn. What would I tell my, What would I tell myself at twenty two? How about ask us both that question? Yeah, I guess I'll go first. Um, what I would tell myself at oh man, let me let me try to like really put myself back in the shoes of twenty two year old. Oh, no one is there to help you. Like no one's gonna do it for you. So stop looking for that one person or that one thing that is gonna be that aha moment life changer because it's never gonna happen. And. Stay true to what you believe in. I think at even 22, I would be hell bent on one thing and I'd be so adamant on that. And as soon as somebody pressed me about it, I would crumble and be like, oh, maybe you're right. Uh, I'm gonna go hop on that one now. And now that's what I believe in. And the same thing would happen. It's a vicious cycle. Whereas now, if I wanna believe in something wholeheartedly, I take the time to learn it. I digest. I understand the pros and cons of feeling this way. I understand what different opinions could be. I don't get so offended when somebody believes something I don't believe, I respect their perspective on it, but I'm not gonna let you persuade me to think otherwise if I still believe in, in my values and my truth. So I think at 20 years older, a little more, you don't wanna really give a shit. And it's actually almost fun to, to experience other people's perspective on what you believe in. So that's what I would say. Hold true to yourself and don't let other people persuade you to be something different. Hmm, it's a lot. Not that much. And you're only four years removed. I'm not, I'm 28. Oh, sorry. Let me do some quick math. Six. Six years removed. Yeah. So, you know, the question being, what would you tell your 22-year-old self? Mine is really simple, and that's that the sun comes up tomorrow. You, you and everyone who's at that age, and it's a timeless, timeless concept, at 50 eight years old, the sun comes up tomorrow. And that's what you gotta hope for. You, you have to truly believe that there's a chance to do things better than the moment, the hour, the day, the week, the month before. And so look forward to that. Look forward to the sun coming up the next day and have another shot at it. Do you remember f not feeling like that at 22? I remember when I was 22, it feeling like, like, what did I, cause again, you know, I started younger than you. I, I was married 24, yeah. 20, you know, 25, having children, 26, different. But at, at 22, I didn't, I only could think about as I reflect back now was getting started. I just wanted to get started. I want to get a job. I want to go work. I want to make money. I wanted, wanted, wanted. And that was the, the mindset just, head down and pedal, head down and pedal. Yeah. And I didn't know what I was doing. I was really just didn't know what I was doing. And the world then wasn't like it was today where you could just go, um, you know, you guys, there's so many advantages. There really are. Yeah. But there's so much debilitating overload mm -hmm. with this and the information, right? That's, the problem. So when I was 22, it was just me and my buddies and you'd, you'd watch what your friends were doing. You know, and if Uncle Steve was sitting at a gas station lighting matches and then he's surprised that he almost blew up the gas station. Well, uh, yeah, I, don't, I know I don't want to do that. So I'll go. I don't know if he was 22, but I think he was like probably 19 when he did that. <laughs> and that's a true story. Who lights mas matches at a gas station? We'll wait for him to get back on the podcast. To, we, you to have to ask him that story. He'll be back. That's a, but that's a good... Um, so anyway. No, that's a good uh, reflection on your age. And it's, it is very different. Like now, it's the, like you said, debilitating. But at the same time, if you're in a circle, and I'm not saying Uncle Steve, but let's say you were in a, a bad circle, guys that weren't going anywhere, had no motivation, no drive, but you feel like you always did. Hmm. But you almost felt weird for feeling like that because like everybody around me just isn't like that. Yeah. Nowadays, you can see on social media, oh, there are people like that out there and I can access them. I can literally physically hang out with them and learn from them. Yeah, there's groups, there's, there's listen, there's church groups, there's youth groups, there's, there's dog, dog 
Just time it. Doggy, time doggy it. groups? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Continue that thought. Yeah. I church lo- groups. I already lost it. Go with the church groups thing. I lost the thought. I don't know where you're going either. God. Guidance. What? There's guidance. When you feel like none of your friends are doing what... Uh, yeah, no, you said it. When you yeah. said there's other... You're, right, and you started saying that there's church yeah. groups. Yeah, so there's... Listen, but to understand when I was younger and my friends were not interested, they weren't interested in the same thing I, things I was. They just weren't. No. No one, no one very, really, well, I shouldn't say no one. There was one, Kenny Brown. Kenny Brown and Nicky DeMiro. Two guys, two very different paths for me. But those two guys talked about it, right? Going and getting it. A life, money, yeah. all of whatever the abundance was. They talked about it. But we never, we didn't really hang around because we were already in different places physically, mm-hmm. 22, right? And, and so that was the, the biggest contrasting difference, I think, between my growing up at 22 and maybe you guys growing up today. And even some of the things that we talk about the goal setting today, the differences are, yeah, there are people and there are groups and you can see them and touch them and get closer to it a lot quicker. You, yeah. could, you, could, you could find probably in your apartment building if you put up a, a social media post or something on the whatever they call it. What's the, uh, the, the blog, uh, the, uh, the board? Don't you have like something in the, in the, in the condominium? Don't you have something? I'm going to have a party. What do you throw it up on? What do you throw it up on? What's the name of it? I don't don't play dumb. I, I'm not playing dumb. John, when the condominium association wants information to go out, where does it go? Where do you get it? They would like email blast, newsletter? That's it. There's no. There's no other. Your point is being block. made. Continue, please. No. So that's my point. My point is, if I said I want to hang around with young adults this age, you asked me how, to, how I would. You do could it. communicate it like that. You could find these people. I would do two it. or three or ten or twenty and say, "Meet me in the lobby." You could do that. I would do it. Per, I would do it. Um, like personally, like on my own social or something. But I think even that, like, same feelings, is. Is how I feel now too Because again It goes back to like The sandbox you're playing in You know If you feel like you belong In the sandbox Then you're probably pretty happy But if you feel like you're Way too small Or way too big You're gonna be Very uncomfortable So it's like You may see these people online But you're not gonna feel like They are real Or even exist Or you're not gonna Really know their flaws And see meet them in person Like I can look at Super successful Content creators That are just Crushing it in every capacity Mm. But if I never Actually meet them I don't know what they're really doing to get there, and I don't know what their flaws really are. Probably can't. Most people can't even explain to you how they got there. And that's right. It's right. That's the point that we were making before. Is yeah. like it really should be aligned with who you are. If right. if you want to go do something and be great at it, it has to align with you internally. You're not you're not finding that somewhere. No one's going to hand you the roadmap and say, "Here, follow these steps." Even if you're they good. did, that's the point. Like you, you look at any big creator or anybody that's like, "I'll give you the blueprint. I'll do. Yeah. I'll tell you exactly what I've done," right. and you're not going to be able to do it like me because you're not me. Well, that's what and that's what a lot of people exploit, and they try to convey to say, "Hey, you want to do this? Right. You want to be a millionaire in the real estate market? Here's my DVD. Here's the steps." Right. Exactly. Okay. It is an exploit. Those are the steps, and yes, they work in principle, but the variables that come into play in real world are such that you may not get through all the steps because something's changed. Or one of the steps doesn't really align with you, but right. now you're confused because well, you have to follow it and yeah. like you, now you're lost. It's okay. But it, it still is helpful. Don't get me wrong. Those are still helpful, broad overviews um, of what you can do and what you can accomplish because it's helpful when someone tells you their story, how they made it. Yeah. It is. But you have to be willing to take the sacrifice, compromise, and the risk that comes with all of it. See, that's why I think your generation is at a bit of a, of a benefit from achieving success, actually, is because you had no choice but to find what works for you, right? Like, you found what works for you because that you just lived life, you woke up, and you said, you took bits and pieces, and now you look back, and that was your road. And you can reflect on what you did step by step, whereas us, we're looking almost too much into the future of what we have to be doing. If you want to be successful, you have to do this, this, and this. And if you uh, don't, you're a failure. I'm, I'm telling you, your, your, your generation's greatest downfall is that everyone, not everyone, many of you feel you could do it better and that you're, you could do it on your own, whatever it is. 
when I grew up, it was go work for yeah, that exactly. company, yeah, right, right. work for that company, mm-hmm. work, work, pick your profession, go work for that company. The only people who were self-employed had landscape trucks and pizzerias. And, and outside of that, I didn't even know who else was self-employed because the guy that I work, would maybe work for could have been self-employed, could have been a family business, could have been, could have been, but I would have known it. You know, it, it, right? Well, you, you said it, like you put a lot more trust in your mentors. Like your mentor would do something. If, if yeah, you had a guy, if you had a Michael Jordan to your Scotty Pippen, and you're like, you know all what? I don't long. care what this dude says. I'm going to go it. and do it. I don't care if he tells me to jump off a cliff. There is no trust nowadays right. because our mentors are fabricated. Well, They're not real people. And They're you, people and online. You, the sooner your generation and the generation that's upcoming figures this out, the better they'll be collectively, all things taken into the, the process, the thought process of it. Because it's emotionally st- so strenuous to try to figure out who am I? What am I going to do? How can I do it on my own? And, and, and try to build it. That's why it's just sometimes follow. It's okay to follow. I'm not saying follow somebody to the end of the earth and fall off the end. Okay, I'm not saying that, but it's okay to follow and learn until maybe the opportunity does right. present itself to become something different. Yeah, I wonder why people have such an issue with following nowadays. Nobody wants to say, I'm going to do whatever this is. I don't know either. Do. I have an idea why, but I don't know why you, you collectively, the proverbial you, the group that are considering what to do when they get out of college and what to do when you know, they reach the the crossroad of, I, I don't like my boss, I don't like my commute, I don't like, I don't like, well, no kidding. Of course you're not gonna like everything. But you can't just run away There's and so pivot options, out of it and go do it yourself. They think they can. They think they, they can. can. Yeah, we, yeah, our generation has way too many, as soon as, if you're my mentor, back yep. in the day, I would've listened to everything you said. Yep. You say something I don't agree with, I'm going online and, and, and hearing yeah. somebody justify why you're wrong, and now I lost that whole trust in you. And I'm like, all right, well, everything he's saying is probably pretty fabricated. Well, it's that's opinions. A, that's a problem. It's opinions and it's influence and impacted differently um, because, like you said, you can click, shoot, and find 10 different thoughts about one thing that you maybe <sighs> think, and that's, that's the rabbit hole. It's stressful. I'm don't, go, stressed don't, go down the, don't go down that rabbit hole. Just don't even do it. How about that? Yeah, but it's hard. It's an Turn your phone off. Oh, okay, set, set a limit on your phone. Don't, is, don't look at it. Well, speaking of phones, is there anything in 2023, and I, you're not going to like the word, Yeah. Is there anything you regret from 2023 or, or feel like you can improve upon? There's uh, nothing that jumps out as a, a regret. There's moments in the year that, again, I think I said to you before that we've learned from. I would have rather have not gone through and spent the money, the time, the energy yeah. with the wrong alignment. Not we, like you personally. Um, no, because I don't... I don't think that personally there was too many individual opportunities for myself. No, I just mean like, like anything you want to improve upon for 2024. Yeah, I want to improve. I want to take what we've done. No, you're still not looking within. What do you mean? You. For me personally? As a person, yeah. No, I, th- I think one of the, it goes back to the health thing. That's one oh, thing right. personally. That's a personal takeaway for me. And then that's it. I don't need to have two or three or ten one is well, I'll start with one. Start with one. Interesting. What, well, why not? It's easy. I, yeah. Yeah. That's good. One is better than none. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. So. Yeah. That's good. I hope. Uh, happy New Year, everybody. If happy you're New Year. Still. Yeah. I think that's about it for today. Um, guys, again, don't make your goals. Ha- ha- be very conscious in when you're setting your goals and what 2024 20, brings to you. It's going to be a very prosperous year. For you, you have to believe that and manifest that above everything else. But don't put so much pressure on yourself. Um, if you had a tough 2023, you know that it hopefully will get better for you. Sun so will come up tomorrow. Sun will come up tomorrow. That is it. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Everybody, cheers. Cheers. I just want to answer one more question. So, go ahead. Oh, Joe has a question. Keep, keep it quick, though. Keep it quick. Go ahead. Rapid I fire question. Should, go. I mean, just shut off. Right. I think they already clicked off the... Uh, we'll click back in. Oh, we'll click back, back in. in. Hey, get, don't get go back anywhere, in here, everybody. Right. Get Maybe back in. Give, give one to three uh, New Year's resolutions you think each other should... That we both one should, that you 
ones that you think he should do. Oh, and this you is good. Do. All right, all right. God, you go first. I'm going to let you start. What no, is one I, thing? I, I'm, I have to think. What it, you can think. We got time. I am, so you What go is first. one thing that you think I should make, right? That, yeah, yeah. What is one thing you think I should make as my New Year's resolution? Hmm. I have to think about that one. Really? I can name them. You can name one for yourself? What I think you think so I should So then you do. go first. No. What I think you, uh, what I know you're going to oh. say. Uh, I, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't, nothing's coming to me. I, I shouldn't be more organized. Oh, there's a good one. Okay. <laughs> there's your one. Say it. That's one. That's enough. Just let's start with one. How about that? I should, learn, I should organize learn. your life. Organize life, not just okay. one well, I don't know, calendar. Well, yeah. your whole your the life needs to be somewhat in a a bit of a balance of of, of being organized. Could be, you could benefit by it. Okay. Fair. So if I'm saying in the broad stroke, it's life, and you only get a calendar. Or this or that. We'll take those. Those are all parts of the success. Organization is my resolution yeah. for the year. Okay. Right. Good. Yeah. What about me? Nice. Uh, let's see here. Oh, boy. It's a good, uh, thing. good thing no one's listening to this right now. Yeah, no one's listening. Everyone Everybody's gone. Off. Everybody's gone. No, gone. if I could say this respectfully, I, I would like to see you be a little more open and malleable to listening and learning to other people. Yeah, probably. From other people. You? Anybody. Listening, and, but I do. I think I do. And that's the problem right there. Hmm. So if the resolution maybe is like being more open to learning from different people and maybe changing yourself in ways no, that being... Pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. Well, that's it right there. Any other resolutions for me? <laughs> no. I think that's a good one. You came up with... Listen, here's the... You came up with one for yourself on my behalf and one for me on your own behalf. Help me. Right, which you're not going to listen to. No, I, I, I hear you. I do. I hear you. But this is like, um, I, I would need some like deeper dive and would you specific. Like to? No. I'd be happy to. Why? You want to try to make this some sort of therapy? No. <laughs> no. How do you feel about that? <laughs> How do I feel about that? It makes me feel, oh, I'm, I'm ready to go. Tackle the day. Let's go. Let's do another podcast. Yeah. Happy New Year. This was a Again. success. This was not a failure of a podcast. It's all, it's all good. It's, how about that? It is all good. All good. All right. All That's right. it for today, everybody. Like, subscribe, share. Cheers. And this time we're really out.